what's going on Facebook pray that you guys are doing well um, today is my anniversary my wife thought that I was supposed to be my wife thought I was going in to work today but uh, I just want to capture the look on her face got some roses here um, I took the day off but she didn't know I did so I'm gonna surprise her let's see what happens <laughs> really? <laughs> Got it, y'all. She thought she thought I was actually going to work today. Y'all see that? Like it was Publishers Clearing House. <laughs> so I got her. I'm looking out all the windows. Like, Who is that? <laughs> I heard her sneaking. She lagging like she was a ninja or something, trying to <laughs> trying to go through the house. So I got her real good, y'all. Look at that face. Look at her. She actually thought I was gonna work on our anniversary today. Really? <laughs> so I went and picked up she already got a gift early this morning but I went and got her some roses so I just want y'all to see that look on her face <laughs> I told my sister what I was getting ready to do I was just on the phone with them and I said well I'm getting ready to do it so yeah she shot look at her she don't know what to do with herself I feel like all, my face all red <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at her so yep Mm -hmm. So, gentlemen, if you ever want to surprise them, don't lie, but don't necessarily tell them what's going on. Because, see, I never told her I was going to work. She assumed I was going to work because I had on my clothes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, we're going to have, we're going to kick this day off right. <laughs> so. <laughs> my face hurt in <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Got him. But listen, this is our anniversary. God has blessed us with five years. Five years strong. Woo woo. A lot of people hadn't made it this far. And I'm looking for 555 more. So while it's on camera, I'm going to get me some sugar. <laughs> so Alright, y'all be good now. And uh, leave your comments or whatnot. And uh, we'll, reach, we'll talk to you soon. Have a blessed day. Bye, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Look at it. I don't even know how I'm gonna start this off. I'm gonna need you to think about that now. <laughs> Camera rules. <laughs> A whole minute and went by. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Look like you're excited. Don't look like you tired and like, man, she made me do this. Mm. No. All right. Let's go. Stop cheating so hard. <laughs> <laughs> My face looks crazy. <laughs> hey everybody, I am here for another video. This video is going to be a little different. We're going to do a couple's interview. We just celebrated our five year wedding anniversary. Five. <sighs> five. Yeah. So... <laughs> So that's five years of dealing with this silliness. Right? Yeah, five years of me dealing with all this silliness. 
What the hell do you mean? Mm-hmm. All right, so I have um, a series of questions um, to ask. We're going to both answer the questions and basically just, you know, reflect on marriage so far. My eyes look closed. My eyes look closed, don't they? I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. I got them Asian looking eyes though. though. Yes, I don't know oh, why okay. everybody think AJ get the Asian from me. I'm like, no, my eyes are white. <laughs> he gets that from his daddy. So I guess he get the black part from me. Oh, <laughs> he is so cutting all this out. Um. <laughs> see oh okay so i'll save that because that question is on there all right so the first question that i have is um going all the way back to 2012 when we had our wedding what was your favorite memory of our wedding (laughs) oh you mean actual wedding yes oh oh okay (laughs) i thought you meant like the day uh, cause we know what the, uh, my favorite one was about the wedding day, but the wedding. It's a lot of good parts in that. I got a lot of favorites. One when I saw you walking down the aisle, <laughs> you ain't stand me up. Yay. A runaway bride, you ain't stand me up. Um, no, I was wondering, you know, what was the hold up? I was ready. I was sitting in the car like, all right, now let's, let's get this thing going. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> see, it was that, you know, um, kissing you, dancing with You know what? Other than the food, <laughs> because my family threw it down. Other than the food, I would say just... The when we did the line dances, I love the line. I like the line. I love the line dances, and everybody just came up and just started doing them. Even my former pastor, he started doing it, <laughs> doing the line dances. So yeah, that was cool. That was cool. That's probably my favorite. Yeah. Um, I would say my, <clears throat> I would say my favorite was, um. Probably that too. I like how we ended up doing the Soul Train line. Yeah, that the, was fun. You mean the thing in which I didn't do oh. because my brother had me outside taking pictures, <laughs> and by the time I came back in, everybody was leaving. I'm like, what? <laughs> so yeah, no, that was my unfavorite part <laughs> of the entire thing. Y'all, I'm watching y'all on the video. I'm like, I don't want to look at this no more. <laughs> yeah, so it was that. And, um, uh, what was I getting ready to say? I don't forget. I don't know what you was getting ready to say. <laughs> um, oh, when we both came back in. Ah, to the Cosby. Yeah, that Cosby. was Cosby, season seven, intro. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, okay. <laughs> But really, the, the, the whole thing really was fun. Even taking the pictures, we had fun with that. It was fun. Yeah. It was a fun day. But yeah. I would say the top favorite thing to me was when it was all over. <laughs> I don't think people realize, well, those of y'all that are married, I don't think people realize how much stress Yeah. is on that day. And the best part of that day is when it's over. <laughs> yep, it's like, whoo. Yeah, yeah. Done with it. <laughs> yeah. All right, so my name. I don't think we would have had a wedding had we had to do it all over again. We would have had look, like a little secret one or something. Mm hmm. Because that's how stressful the stuff was. But we had fun. Yeah. But it was still stressful. And then, of course, for me as the female, you know, I'm worried about how everything's going to turn out and stuff. Like, how's it all going to look? But when I walked in. Everything was just so nice yep. and it was so pretty. I was like, oh my gosh, look at everything. Y'all, I know this probably sounds crazy, but I was actually excited when I was sitting out in the car waiting to go in and I could see family members like walking in. I was like, oh, so it's okay. Oh, they came to see me get married. Oh, so it's okay too. 
Like, I I don't know if I just felt like nobody was just going to show up, but... <laughs> now, you know, in our family, but it was so... especially black families that ain't never met, oh, hmm, we got to see who we who they marry and try. <laughs> but it was it was so nice to, you know, to it was so nice to see everybody and... It it was it was nice, it really was. Yeah, shout out to my cousin Christabel Thurman. She hooked up the decorations. Her and my cousin Denise Kenner, they hooked it up. Yeah, they hooked it up. They hooked it up. <laughs> they did. They they hooked that up now. So I guess to add on to what you were actually mentioning, because my next question here is, what was the most stressful about wedding about the wedding and planning? Oh, oh. You mean other than people not doing what they were supposed to do? <laughs> so that was one <laughs> that was one thing. Trying to get everybody to cooperate and do what you need them to do. And then you wondering or worrying that, oh gosh, it's, it's all gonna fall apart now because everybody ain't doing it right. <laughs> I don't know if I need to say this or not, but <laughs> and also you mean people trying to give you cold feet? <laughs> trying to talk you out of marrying me on and, that and, day. And why is that? Why is that a thing? Like, because it was it was several people. Like they try to discourage you from getting married. Well, when you look at their lives, and you begin to examine their lives, and you see exactly why they say what they say a lot of times. <laughs> Child, I want you to make the same mistakes I did. Well, you ain't got nobody. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just. And some of them ain't ever been married. It ain't too late to back out. What? What is that? <laughs> well, I've always been the type where I, I'm, I'm very observant. So I look at, you know, what's going on with others and see what these issues are. And I, I, I try to learn from other people's mistakes. <laughs> I try to like oh, when you I try to. <laughs> yeah, well, I learn. Sometimes, from sometimes you know, you make your own mistakes. But I mostly try to learn. Well, I don't from learn from them. I learn from other people's <laughs> mistakes. I'm joking. I'm kidding. <laughs> I try to learn from other people's mistakes when I see you know stuff they messed up with or you know things didn't work out or things that they've done wrong. So then I you know make that mental note that okay I don't need to do that or I need to look out for that or I need to make sure I pay attention to that. So, but you know I feel like. You know, is there's a difference in someone trying to, uh, I guess, discourage you from actually getting married versus someone actually just, I guess, advising you maybe about certain things. You know, it's not going to be easy. You know, you got, you know, wise counsel, not. Now you it ain't too late to back. No, don't do stuff like <laughs> you know. Then you wait on that day if you got to say something. Say, you know what I mean? I, you know, I just, you know, that, that, see all these questions bringing back all these memories from that day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, so you said the worst thing about the, the most stressful. Oh, the most stressful is that's why we had a planner <sighs> with, with a lot of the planning stuff and everything. Uh, but cause that did take a lot of stress off of us. Yeah. Yeah. But I would say for me, the top thing is people not doing what they're supposed to do or, you know, you got people. You know, that's another thing. I want to advise you. I know, you know, you have your friends, those of y'all that plan on getting married one day or in the process of it. Make sure you have people. If you're asking people to be in your way, make sure that people that that's reliable and dependable because, uh, you know, the stressful thing is that you know you you you're you're wondering if the people that you already know a lot of times is not dependable or reliable and you wondering are they gonna do what they're supposed to do and yeah I, that was the thing people not doing what they're supposed to am I rambling I'm rambling ain't it? I feel like I'm rambling okay I need to hush go ahead I'm sorry I'm um, so, <clears throat> can you hear me a pillow? <laughs> Cause of the oof. There you go. Pack it in there. There we go. Now all of a sudden I'm gonna be straight up <laughs> in the video. Straight up. Straight up. When my sister said it, I said, "What is it?" She said, "Straight." I was like, "Stay on task, dear." Okay. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> so the next question is, how have you enjoyed the first five years being married to a wonderful me? Answer the question. Keep <laughs> playing. Um, it has been a journey, but it has been a wonderful journey, though. I mean, <laughs> I was going to say you could have said it's been great. First no, I, before I'm, you start talking about it's a journey. No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a, it has been a journey. These five years have been a journey, but. They have been a good, they've been great. I mean, you know, not everything in it has been great, obviously, but we have a whole lot more gooder, a <laughs> whole lot more gooder times mm -hmm. than we did with worse times. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> no, but we, we, I, I've enjoyed the marriage. Now we've had some things that take place in the, um, in the marriage, in the marriage that wasn't so, you know, didn't feel good, wasn't good. And like we had our um, two miscarriages or whatever. Um, that was a very rocky uh, time in our life because I've never felt anything like that, never been through anything like that before. Um, but it didn't shake our relationship any. It just, you know, one of those things where, you know, something happened and now you have to learn how to deal with, recover, uh, deal with and recover from that particular um particular event or whatnot that that took place so, so it was a lot of it's a lot of readjusting now we're only five years in you know we got a long way to go long way to go with it but you know i've enjoyed it i've learned a lot still learning i don't think i've ever i will ever quit learning um learning stuff about myself five years later that i didn't even really know about myself and i'm sure you could say you have learned a lot of things about me that you didn't know before that you thought was wasn't there or didn't just didn't know because a lot of stuff I didn't even know was there, you know. But yeah, no, I've enjoyed. I enjoy being married. I do. <laughs> Me too. I can't speak for anyone else, but I enjoy being married. Work, yes, but I mean, what's not work? <laughs> That's how I look at it. I mean, what's not work, but. Um, I enjoy being married. Yay. And I'm not just saying that because the camera's on me. <laughs> huh? Huh? <laughs> well, I've, of course, enjoyed being married. And it's it's nice being able to have somebody to... It's nice being able to have somebody, you know, that's, you know, your partner to go through life with. So you go through all these, you know, different changes and life changes and you got somebody with you to do that with thus we get life partner get it <laughs> life no okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry keep talking i'm sorry so so yeah so like like this this is this is how we are we we have fun and that's what i like i like i like being married and still have fun because a lot of people they think that <laughs> you get married what what somebody, graveyard what yeah. is it the mar what is it the marriage graveyard marriage graveyard <laughs> <laughs> who's saying that <laughs> what Theo off the Cosby was show Theo? I, think, I think it was Theo <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's not like that it's <laughs> not this one anyway you no know, yeah not this one so I've I've enjoyed it and. I'm just, I'm just ready to, to keep going. You ready? Yeah. What is um five hundred fifty five? Five hundred and fifty five more, and then our sixth year it'll be six thousand six hundred and sixty six more. In the seventh year, it'll be seventy thousand seven hundred. No, seven thousand. Wait a minute. No, I said that all wrong. Seventy seven thousand. There you go. Seven hundred. Yeah. So. I ain't want to help you, and then you think I was trying to insult you. <clears throat> <laughs> so, what's your favorite memory since we've been married? Uh, Zumba. 
<laughs> Zumba. Okay. Um. <laughs> wow. So what's my favorite? Hold on. Go Outside ahead. of that. Okay. That's my favorite. <laughs> Hands down. But. I don't know. Because there's been a lot of. I mean, I would love to say AJ, which, oh man, when he finally came, um, outside of Zumba <laughs> and everything, um, we've had a lot of good moments. Like when we got, when we got our first house together, um, first account, first account together, um, you know, and after having those two losses, finally having a son, our son of promise. And then we're on baby number two. And, uh, wow. You know, it's, yeah, that's probably favorite memories. To, one of my favorite memories together, having AJ watching that little grown fella come out of that womb. And cause I call him, he came out grown <laughs> eight pounds even. And, um, now we're on baby number two together. Let me just say this. Hats off to y'all single parents. Because I don't know how y'all do it. I don't either. I'm sorry. That was just a, <laughs> you know, I had to throw that in there. But I was, I'm always saying that. I'm like, man. I don't see how y'all do it. Especially y'all have more than, more than two and more than one. Woo, hats off. <laughs> you know, because I, I know how challenging it can be together versus... You know, whew, hats off to you. But um, I would say when AJ came, when he finally came and wow. Then we're on baby number two. So it's like for the two losses, now, you know, we've gained two more. And uh, yeah, so then the, the time frame AJ was born, man, it's, it's something. Because um, the second one when we had got the DNC, when you got the DNC done, that was on Feb. Uh, Feb September. That was on <laughs> February 17th of 2015. AJ came um, February 16th of 2016. Yeah, so it's yeah. That's my opinion, what I would say. What say you? <coughs> um, Heart top me though, wait a minute. As far as... <laughs> <laughs> As far as favorite memory since we've been married, it, is, is, it really is hard to pinpoint one. But I would definitely say, like, just whenever we did, you know, just fun stuff together. Like, just, you know, <laughs> playing the video games against each other. Or, you know, go walking and just have these wonderful conversations and stuff. I love stuff like that. Um... Even when we went on the honeymoon and we went, um, we were on the cruise ship. We was we yeah. was hanging out at that arcade, like stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, the moments where we get to just be kids together. <laughs> I just I love that. But there was a moment that um, that like my heart like just like it just it just I don't know. I want to say I don't want to say like the Grinch, like it grew two sizes, but. <laughs> But at, but at the same time, I want to say it, you you melted my heart too. <laughs> but it was it was when we um when we had um found out about the the second miscarriage, and we were in the car leaving the doctor's office, and I <laughs> and I was like all concerned and stuff, and I was like, you know, because I know that you know as a man, you know, you it's, it's something about you know when you have a son and all. And, and I just had that moment where I was like, am I even going to be able to have kids? And I had asked you, um, would you still love me if I couldn't have any kids? And you was like, babe, my love was, my love for you was not predicated on whether we have kids or not. And just when you said that, it was just like, oh. yeah. So, <laughs> like, it, it just, it kind of was like, like that little ray of sunshine through that, you know, really tough time. So, knowing that, you know, I still had you in, 
And, you know, it, even though, I mean, I know it wasn't gonna, you know, do anything, you know, to us, but I knew that it basically just let me know that whatever happened or whatever the future held, we, we were, we were okay. We were gonna be okay. That guy ain't tearing up. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> um, next question. What have you learned so far? So I guess, um, I guess just a main thing that you've learned. Um, wait a minute now. In the marriage? Mm -hmm. or Okay. Um. Well, well, not too long ago, we we kind of we talked about this. Is that you know the thing I learned is that, and kind of like let this um, those of y'all that's listening to me, um, this kind of like be I guess a little wisdom nugget for you or a key is that <clears throat> one thing I've learned and it, and has driven everything home is that you know you have two people from two different worlds, okay that and you're trying to come together to make one world, you know, you come from two completely different cultures, you know, how she came up was not the same way I came up. Now, it doesn't mean, you know, her, I was a bad person or, or anything like that, but just our upbringing was different. So because of that, we brought different things to the relationship. And sometimes what she needed, what you needed me to be, I didn't know how to be that because I I wasn't raised that way. Like um uh we we talked about it, you know, you come from more of a family that you know y'all just you know y'all talk about your day and all that stuff. My we ain't really necessarily do all that. Matter of fact, we a lot of times we just try to avoid each other cuz somehow or other somebody going to argue about something and you know, I ain't getting too much in detail with with a lot of the stuff, but you know, it wasn't all bad, but, you know, more times than none, the only time we really came together is when we was talking about somebody. <laughs> or we were fighting each other. You know, it just, you know, so I didn't know how to be what she needed me to be or or I didn't know how to flow in her normal. Because um, my normal was completely different. So how I dealt with things was not talking it out. I dealt with things in isolation and seclusion. Um, or what have you. So I had to learn to, um, and I prayed, trust, I'm a man of prayer. Now I had to pray because I, I, I let God know. I said, listen, God, I do not know how to be what she needs me to be. And so over a course of time, I start, you know, I start learning that and I've come a mighty long way. Um, now I wasn't no Grinch or uh, nothing like that now, but you know, certain things it, it looked one way, but that wasn't the case. And so the more we started to converse about it and the more I spent time with her and her family, she spent time with me and mine, she started to, both of us started to see, oh, oh, I see, I see what you're saying. So I learned um, patience, patience, because you made a commitment. You said, till death do you part. You, you know, you promised to hang in there through, um, for, for better or for worse. And the thing is, we hadn't went through worse. And that, you know, that was just, that was just learning each other. So patience, I, I would say patience with each other, forgiving each other, especially over things that, you know, the other one may not have ever experienced in that capacity. Be understanding of the person's heart, you know, whatnot, and where they are mentally, you know, and try to unlock that in wisdom. But I would say patience. Um, with each other, knowing that you two come from two completely different backgrounds, two completely different worlds, and you're trying to come together and make your own culture. But you're going to have to detox from that in order to make this. So, you know, so I, that's what I've learned, and that's what I'm still learning. So that's what I would say. What say you? And that takes a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. Um, For me, it's definitely with, it has to do with the communication. Like, definitely, um you know, plan things ahead and together. Um, Cause it seems like things just seem to flow better when we, when we just sit down and go, okay, so throw everything out on the table. So this is what we got. So this is what's going on here. This is what's going on there. And just, you know, really 
handling everything as a team together. Um, because, you know, before marriage, you know, you're used to doing things yourself and in your own way. And so now you got somebody else that's in the house that, you know, you you need to be doing things together. So that's one thing that I've learned that um, basically to make sure you do things together, plan things out together, discuss things together, um, instead of trying to go outside of you know, the other person and then the other one is surprised when stuff come up and yeah, do things together. <laughs> I guess, you know, the me and you kind of, I guess it almost said the same thing. Now we didn't rehearse any of this, so this is just, <laughs> psh, you know, but I, I guess me and you are basically saying the same thing about adjusting because, um, you know, marriage from what I've learned so far, and, and, you know, not just with each other, but then when you start talking about buying a home to raise a family, when you're planning for a family, um, you have kids that you're bringing into the equation um, or whatnot, you have to adjust because every every different places in your life brings different seasons. Different seasons bring different temperatures. It brings different problems. It brings different blessings. So everything is about adjusting. So um, and not just that, but just adjusting to each other, you know. When, cause you're not gonna be the same person you were when y'all first met. Don't make you a bad person. Just means you're growing, and you know you grow into other interests. You, um, you know you you grow into other things. So, learning to adjust with the times or the season that you're in with each other. So, yeah. All right. So next, the next question is, um, what do you want to accomplish in the next five years? Hmm. In our marriage. Next five, mm -hmm. business owners, definitely want it. Um, definitely going after that. Um, wanna, um, both of us actually have aspirations for that um, to be business owners. But me, um, by by this time, five years later, I want to be a um, business owner. That's what I'm working towards. Um, I'm already working in ministry, you know, doing doing some things in ministry. Should I just well, um, <laughs> uh, in ministry or whatnot? Um, also, uh, our final child that we're planning on having <laughs> <laughs> will be here. Also, um, I want to ha I want to have our own land. You know, um, I love the neighborhood in which we live in, but you know. HOAs and you know you can't do and you do and you know and all that so and ask for permission yeah and you know approvals. yeah and they you know paying them HOAs what they ever do for us <laughs> you know you're paying a fee to because we're giving you the right to live here you know what you know so I rather um paying them so they can write me a letter to cut the grass <laughs> exactly I don't feel like cutting my grass all the day you know we just... paying you you cut it <laughs> <laughs> so yeah but um. Uh, definitely our own, if not in the five, maybe in the 10 or whatever, but definitely won't own land or whatnot. Yeah. So that's what I, I, I definitely, um, like I was in ministry, definitely want to be far, um, farther along than where I am, which is, you know, we have really progressed in that since we've been married though. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. You're doing good. <laughs> My goal for the next five, well, yeah, for the next five years. Next um, five. Yeah, next five. Um, <laughs> you made me do that. Fifth flow. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, <laughs> pretty much like what you said. Um, I definitely uh, want to be um stay at home mom and wife. Um. And it's funny because at one point I never would have thought that I would say anything like that. Because, you know, I was, you know, school and career driven and like, yeah, I made this money. And She's been listening to a lot of Beyonce coming up. That's <laughs> yeah, that was back when I was listening to Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> Every semester um, when I was in college, what was that song? Independent Women, um, Destiny's Child. That was my motivation song at the beginning of every semester. <laughs> Damn, 
that's what it was. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry, I'm violating sleep. Mm -hmm. Um, um, but yeah, the next five years, I definitely, which I'm working on that now. Um, I want to be a stay at home mom and wife and be here and you know take care of my family and teens make it a nice wonderful home and yeah um as far as business um you know i'm an educator and i'm just i'm an educator at heart like i've been i've been teaching since i was in preschool so I used to set my little stuffed animals on the floor and teach them how to read and how to do math and count and all of that stuff so um so i have my tutoring thing going um so i'm about to um pick that back up so definitely want to have that you know fully running um in the next five years um i don't i don't know if this will count as an accomplishment but it is something that i want us to do as a married couple but i in the next five years, I do want us to go on another cruise. We ain't going on a cruise. We we going. We we actually. I want to actually take her somewhere, um, and I may, I'm making preparations for that. But I actually want to go somewhere. You know, cruises are nice, but you can't really enjoy the places you're going. Going, like I, I want to go somewhere and like stay a few days, like just so you can really but that's what I'm planning on but she want to go on another cruise I think on another cruise but I'm making plans for something else got this mm, okay I got this hey mm -hmm. <laughs> you silly all right so um the next question we're almost done um how have kids and pregnancy made a difference? Oh, a whole lot. I'm be honest with you. Look, let me tell y'all something. I don't remember life without kids. I'm being honest with you. I don't remember what we were doing before AJ came. <laughs> I, I can't. I'm like, I dog. What are we doing? Watching Netflix all day and doing other, hey, doing grown folk stuff all. Day. <laughs> I, I can't. Like, I can't imagine that. But one thing about it, marriage, churn. They definitely will break you out of selfishness. Especially, she's pregnant again. Man, look, because you know, without kids, you know, you although you're married, you can kind of just... You know, I try to hold on to a little bit of selfishness. Like, if I want to go eat me a cup of ice cream... See, like, she can do that. Like, AJ, I'm not sharing. I'm it, not. She can do that because she's... See, I, I can't do that because, see... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they, you, then you got to share Man. everything. You know, you got to share. You can't eat a burger without... Now, he full. <laughs> eat, eat. That's what he do now. Eat, eat. And he'll come and... Oh, yeah. You know, it's... <laughs> Go on, get a bite. <laughs> They're happy because they're eating, too. I'm, I'm acting like I'm mad, but I'm happy eating. Because a few years ago, he wasn't even here. So, you know, but um, it's definitely broke me out of uh, selfishness some you know uh yeah because some things i'm like no nah, you got your own food but like her he wants to eat my food although we got the same thing and i done fixed his but he want to eat from me like this morning daddy's food just look it just looks good but yeah that size made a difference uh so now you have this other person i heard one child say he looks like my past so uh aj is my past and um yeah so having to care for this little person and watch this little person grow into prayerfully a better version of me is is yeah you want the best for that little fella and this little fella and prayerfully next time our daughter yeah, and I was just getting ready to say, because we passed that question, but that was the other thing that I want wanted to accomplish the next five years is we have our girl. I want my girl. <laughs> oh, but yeah. Um, so, my point of view of how kids and pregnancy has made a difference. Um, hmm. 
basically the same thing. You know, you, you have another person now that, you know, you, you have to share with and share the space. And with me actually, you know, going through the pregnancy, I'm having to share this space. So it's like, whoo, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so you already have an adjustment with, you know, your spouse. And now you have an adjustment with, you know, this new little person that's actually learning the entire world now. Like, they just, they're just here and they're just, they're learning everything. So you got, you know, one person that, you know, have has already you know, has a, you know, built background. And now you have one that's just a clean slate. Um, and so having to, you know, adjust to all of that, as far as the difference that it made in the marriage, I would say that it, it just, it added another learning experience. <laughs> Happy to appreciate your time. <laughs> yeah. Because like you were saying, um, before kids, it's like, well, dog, what were we doing before we had kids? Because so, I, I still can't even. Because <laughs> I'm like, dog, I would come home from work and what would I do? Just sit there and watch TV? What, what was I doing? Because now it's like I get home and I just want to sleep. There was a time where, you know, I was like, I wasn't feeling the whole sleep thing. And that was another thing that I had to adjust to with being married because he's got to have naps. And I'm like, I've always been against naps. Like, ever since I was a little kid. Like, it's daylight. We got all, got all these toys to play with. Well, what are you taking a nap for? And here he is wanting to take naps. I'm like, oh, Lord. Oh, trust, when this is over, I'm going to sleep. Yeah, we try, <laughs> we, we trying to shoot this now so he can go take a nap. <laughs> All right, so question. This is a question for you all to also um, add your answers in the comment section below. So the question is, what's your best advice for a continued happy marriage? So what's your advice? Um, stay married. <laughs> well, the, uh, I, get, I would think I would. I would say that my thing is honor your commitment on that day. Whatever you promised on that day, whether it's the traditional, um, you know, for better, for worse, or whether it's your own personal vows, honor that. Not bringing condemnation to anyone that has gotten divorced or anything like that because I understand circumstances happen. Um, but moving forward, I would say that um, don't be a liar. What I mean is if you made a vow or made a promise for something, then try to honor that. Um, but if whatever your limit is, then that needs to be specified um, from Jump Street. I hope you understand what I mean when I say that. But I would say try your best to honor that commitment because love is a choice. Love is not a feeling. You know, that's just infatuation. Infatuations come and go. You know, she don't like me all the time. I mean, how can you not? But she don't like me or sometimes I get on her everlasting nerves. But guess what? Because there's a commitment that's on her. We work it out. She get on my nerves. Psh. She get on my nerves sometimes. No, I don't. That's not even possible. Yeah. Uh, she get on my nerves sometimes. <laughs> <clears throat> but there's a commitment. Um... <laughs> There's a commitment that we both um, stated in our vows, and I'm not a liar. So the one thing about me, if I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Um, so that's what I would say. Honor your vow. Honor what you said because you're not just making a, a, a commitment before people. People are just witnesses, but you're making a commitment before God. And as we know, the book says you're going to be held accountable for every word that comes out of your mouth. So... You know, we can't afford to be liars, so honor that commitment and um, work it. Try to work it out. I mean, it's work, so work it. This is a business. <laughs> Marriage is a business. It's a, you know, institution, so, yeah, that's my advice. That was really good. 
Because you're going to make my advice sound real pitiful. Ain't nothing new. Go ahead. Go on with it. <laughs> go on with it. Ain't nothing new. Shucks. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, my advice... First advice, um, basically know what you're getting into before you even get married. So how is that? How, how, how is that going sound? How is that sound childish or lower compared to mine? That's good there. Yeah. Go right ahead. That's good right there. Now. <laughs> That's good right there. That's good there. Yeah. But yeah, like how I was saying earlier about the communicating and planning things, like do all of that stuff like before you even get married and see where the both of you stand on certain things and yeah. and you know, cause you cause I from what I've noticed <clears throat> what I've learned and <laughs> like earlier when I said that, you know, I I do a lot of observing. So a lot of people I've noticed that I don't know. They they just they get married just because I don't know. It's just for it's like it's just for fun, but it really is a serious thing. And I knew that <laughs> when I was marrying him, and um, you can't just you can't just go into it and think that you know it's just I don't know I don't know what people be thinking, but <laughs> it's not just for they fun. Think Cinderella. Yeah, but we don't know what happened after the happily exactly. ever after. <laughs> he could have killed all we know. We ain't know. <laughs> she probably wanted to go back to her stepmom like, man, shoot. <laughs> bump this, go, bump this palace. <laughs> don't go back, Sydney. Don't go back. <laughs> but but no 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 things before before mm -hmm. you actually get married talk about things so what do you feel right. about this what do you think about that because even before we had kids we even talked about all of that she too did. like so what do you think about if the child does such and such how would you handle that like we talked about right. all of that so that to me that's the first step before you even get married that's true get all that together first finances all of that mm -hmm. how you plan to do all of that don't wait until you didn't got married with somebody and you not even allowed to look at the other account and no. Do <laughs> That's right. Get go do go through all of that before you actually say I do. So that way you know what you what, what you, you I, did. I doing too. <laughs> I do five years <laughs> later, I'm still learning what I did <laughs> on October sixth. What I said I do, I did it. And I'm still figuring figuring out what I did. <laughs> Um, but once you are married, just to keep, you know, that happy marriage, keep the communication. So you start that communication before marriage and you keep it going throughout the marriage That's good. because stuff, stuff will change mm -hmm. and you, you have to talk it out. You have to talk it through like, okay, this didn't come up. Okay. And that just blew our plans out the window. So now what are we going to do? So continue to keep that communication a lot of times marriages fall apart because they're just simply not communicating um because I've, I've seen marriages that fall apart all because you know one person did something and the other one didn't like and it was simple stuff mm -hmm. that could have been resolved but because they didn't communicate to the other one well i don't like when you do this or could we do this or could we not do that or could you do that at a different time because it's just but they don't communicate, and then things just build up, build up, build up. And then it's like, oh, I can't take this anymore. I hate you. Get out of the house. I don't want to deal with you no more. And it really could have been um, resolved. We have time for me to say a quick little story. I don't know. Go ahead. Okay. Well, you don't want to go to sleep. Oh, I'm going right after this. Over. Um, <laughs> and, um, and I know I'm always talking about stuff that I be hearing on the radio, but this was this I like this though. But um, <laughs> um, uh, me and AJ was coming home one night, and the, the radio they was they were talking they were having a conversation about marriage, and you know, and I like stuff like that because I like you know hearing where people are, you know, really you know promoting a healthy and happy and a godly marriage. Um, <clears throat> So it was a guy that they were interviewing and he has um, a book. So they were talking about his book and he mentioned um, a counseling session that he had with a couple and um, 
they they came in to the counseling session they were late and um they came in they started arguing or whatnot and the husband told him that he was that he apologized for them being late and they were late because because of his wife because she didn't get to where they were supposed to meet up at on time and so then she got mad and was like okay great thanks for throwing me under the bus so then they just started bickering back and forth and so the guy basically you know like <laughs> you know like okay ding 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 all right get into your corners and um settled them down and I like the point that that he made because you know they were they were sitting there and they were arguing and arguing, and so he um he asked the husband um about him uh basically just throwing his wife under the bus like that, and he was saying that you know he didn't like that she was making them late, and so the guy told him, "Well, you need to communicate that to your wife." and you're her husband and you're her head you should be you she's not gonna feel protected if you if you're doing her like that mm -hmm. and um so then he looked at the wife and he was like so how do you think it feels like how do you think it makes him feel when you're late or whatnot and he was trying to get her to consider that so basically what he was doing was he was trying to get them to see the other person's point of view and then the harm that, that they were actually causing on each other. And, um, <clears throat> but I just, I just thought that it, cause his whole thing was about cherishing each other. Like, you know, we can have like something like a, a poster, like an NBA poster signed by an NBA player. Or we'll cherish that thing. Oh, you better not touch that. Put it in a glass frame and everything. And his point was that, you know, that's how we should be with our spouses. And, but I like the fact that he had that conversation with them because that, that was really all they needed. They needed to just sit down and just communicate with each other. And there's nothing wrong with telling your spouse, you know what, it, it doesn't make me feel well when you do this, or it doesn't make me feel well when this is going on. And then, you know, you, you have to communicate that. And then you have to talk it out and go, okay, so how are we gonna how are we gonna fix this? How are we gonna make this um better? How are we gonna what are we gonna do so that you know we we're not feeling like this again? Um because nobody I would think that nobody wants to sit there and be arguing all the time or wants to feel, you know, just bad of in any way. So to be able to sit down and talk it out figure out what it is that you want to that you need to do so that you're not feeling that again and of course yeah you're gonna feel it in other times but you you want to be able to keep that communication and be aware of each other like be mindful of each other don't do things because then that goes right back to the selfishness like it's so easy when you know you're just so in your ways and you forget there's another person that's in this with you mm -hmm. and you can't just be doing stuff just like mm, well you better tag along like no <laughs> so definitely keep that communication and um and <laughs> like the guy the point that the guy was making on the interview cherish each other so yeah hopefully that went too long it's <laughs> a good story <laughs> All right, so is there anything else you would like to add or share? No. Anything encouraging you would like to say? Um, You mean other than everything that we have? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, uh, I mean, oof. <laughs> I mean, it's just, um, just make sure that, you know, whatever it was that caused them to fall for you when that when they don't see that person anymore it, it needs i believe it needs to be like a clear message that that person has changed or grown from what you remember so even the per if you can the thing because i'm a firm believer on um whatever you did to get them 
you're going to have to keep doing to keep them <laughs> in a lot of ways. And I think a lot of times, you know, when you think about relationships, you know, it's always one sided. You know, more times than none, you turn on the TV, it's the man, that's the dog, the woman, that you know, and all that. No, the thing is, you're in it together. So if you're going to be in it together, you're going to have to work as a unit. And the only way you're going to work as a unit is you have to know each other, you have to learn each other. And um, the sad truth is that people have gotten married to people they don't know. Um, you have fallen in love with a vessel, but there is treasure or garbage inside of that treasure. So, you know, as my wife said, you know, be mindful of what you get, what you decide to become one with. Because that's going to either be your success or your downfall in your marriage. So I would say keep God first. You got to keep him in it now. You got to keep him in it. I know that and we don't use that. We don't throw that around as if, as if it's cliche. We really mean that. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we see a lot of godless marriages, you know, and that's where you get your conflicts and stuff from. I don't care what people say out their mouth. Look, you can always tell if God is really the center of it by the behavior that goes on. Um, in it or whatever, you know, I, I think it's an insult, you know, to God for people to say God is God and they say, well, we can't make it because of you. You know what I mean? It's, it's an insult. So keep God as that, 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 that middle core, you know, so. uh, um, you mentioned something, which is something else that I have learned <laughs> with being married is, um, <laughs> when you are communicating, be clear. <laughs> and that's the encouragement for today. Be clear. <laughs> Extremely. <laughs> All right, y'all. So that's our little couples interview and reflection on our first five years of marriage. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Um, and I'll be seeing y'all next time. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, Sugarfoot. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you too. And I know you do. <laughs> <laughs>